<laughs> nice. Good job, Rooney. Hello and welcome. I'm Tim and this is SV Paquita. Come along as I stumble through trying to make a transition from being a lifelong professional mariner to switching over to the recreational side, learning how to sail and uh, hopefully one day getting ready to sail around the world. Right now, we're in the Caribbean, getting ready to uh, come back to New England pretty soon, so strap in, come aboard, and uh, hope you like what we have to show you here. Thanks uh, so much for watching. Hello and welcome back, I'm Tim, and uh, I guess this is like our third day, or is, this is supposed to be our third day from our trip from uh, Puerto Rico to Florida, but uh, I, th I, th I think it's actually, I found this other footage, I think this is actually from the second day, so I'm kind of going back in time, so that's why I've sped it up here a little bit but uh yeah we had some really light winds we were waiting for the wind to fill in and during that time we decided to try out the spinnaker and we've only used the spinnaker once before and uh that was really a whole, maybe twice before but uh, it was a lot of fun since then through the island packet owners association I found that people are storing this gigantic thing um, it, it, you, it was really hard to use because you would have to take up a whole bunk to use it but you know to store it on the boat but I found that there's a special place that you can cram it in so we crammed it in there and I was terrified that when it went back up again it would never it wouldn't work because it would be all squished together and uh, it took some doing but uh, we got it up there and uh, then it it finally worked and uh, so we were pretty happy about that we did have a uh, a shackle come loose and a miracle as well when we retrieve this thing we retrieve it out of the hatch that's underneath the boom right in the center of the salon it's actually stored underneath a seat you know one of the one of the settees and so we haul it right up through the hatch and it was a miracle that we were able to find the bolt for the shackle right on deck when we got it up there <laughs> nice. Good job, Rooney. Uh, What's that? Oh, uh, I thought you said I already found a problem. Okay, so it's Wednesday, and uh, we had a great day sailing yesterday. 24 hours, we did 174 miles. That's really good for us, especially we're kind of loaded down with a lot of weight. Uh, pretty proud of that. It's really proud of the wind. It's been blowing 20, 25 the whole time. It's kind of a little gusty, high 20s, almost 30. But it's been real, real sporty, to say the least, but... Uh, very fun sailing. It's uh, when the wind filled in, the troubles I was having with the downwind sailing seemed to be getting a little bit better as far as the wind filling in. And uh, 
we weren't it, uh, we were able to get more of a broad reach than the wind dead behind us, which was making everything kind of messed up. And when the wind filled in, when the boat rolls back and forth, you get less slapping. Since then, the wind has let up a little bit, but uh, it's more in back of us. But uh, we're just sailing with the head sail. So I can bring this around and show you. But uh, since we're at halfway day, we're halfway right now. Um, we've made a decision that we're going to uh, stop. The reason why we've we, we got a couple reasons why we want to stop. I mean, other than the fact that it's beautiful where we want to go, we can't really go off into the. In, we can't go ashore because we haven't checked in with the local authorities or anything like that. But uh, it would be nice to drop the hook for a little while and get some sleep, have a meal that we don't uh, are really gone for dear life. So that could be all fun. So uh, we're going to hopefully go to Auckland's Island. And like I say, we won't be able to go ashore, but from what we do, we need to drop the hook. And by spending six to eight hours there, when we get to the Man Board Channel, we won't, uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, we'll be in daylight. If we continue now, we're going to get there at about midnight. We don't really want to do that. Maybe a little bit after midnight. Um, it gets very shoal in there, bombies that we have to look out for. So, holding up for eight hours. Give us a nice little bit of rest, up the spin, clean the barnacles off the prop and all that sort of stuff that we've been wanting to do and we haven't had a good opportunity to. And uh, it'll also make it so when we do get to the Man of War channel, we'll be able to have the sun up. We'll be able to look for bombies and that sort of thing. It also means that when we continue to Fort Lauderdale, instead of getting there at nighttime, we should get there in the afternoon which is another thing that we'd like to do. So we're going to hope it for. Well then, look how beautiful the water is here. Well, that about does it for uh, our test of this interesting AI uh, wind-canceling software. I'm not really impressed with it, but doesn't really matter what I think. You guys tell me what you think in the comments. Should we do this more often or should we just deal with the wind noise? Let me know. So this is where we've kind of deviated from our course and started headed to try to kill some time over at uh, Acklands Island there in the Crooked Islands. So we we got closer. And as, as you can see, there's a, there's a lighthouse off there in the distance. I've sped everything up because it's just kind of boring and it takes forever. But uh, the big thing is you can see the difference between the dark blue water and the light blue water. And that's from where it's really super, super deep and then getting much more shoal and... Uh, very cool, you know, that beautiful turquoise water that the Bahamas are known for. And, uh, it was beautiful. So we came around the corner and uh, <laughs> once again we were fooled. The wind was blowing a certain way and we figured we're looking at the chart and we're like, okay, if the wind's blowing this way, we're going to get some lee this way and we'll go over here and anchor up over here and it'll be beautiful and blah, blah, blah. We got around the corner and the wind just followed us right around the corner. And it was it, The further north we went, the more the wind was howling at us. So we saw another sailboat at the, uh, at the southern tip, and so we uh, sailed down by them, stuck in right by the beach, as you can see, and uh, dropped the hook, and we're able to get in the water, and give the old girl a scrub, and uh, give us a scrub as well, and then we had beautiful chicken dinner, and uh, oh, it was a great evening all around. We went, got some sleep, and you know, just four or five hours of uninterrupted sleep can't be beat.
Okay, so I feel the need that I have to explain something here. This is not a broken propeller. Although you are looking at a very dirty bottom, and I'll get to that, back to that in a second. But this is actually something called an auto prop, and it's a feathering prop. And uh, I'm going to be pulling the boat out of the water to clean that dirty bottom. And you guys will be able to see how that propeller works. So just bear with me and stand by. So I'm not saying this is a failure of the uh, anti-Fallon paint. Um, after all, we've had close to almost 5,000 miles we've put on this boat. It's gone from up north all the way down south and across over to the southeast and all, all kinds of places. We've done all kinds of things with it. Um, we also have been in very fertile waters. The, the marina in... Uh, that I stayed in Puerto Rico is kind of a petri dish. It's known for really growing great oysters and all kinds of stuff like that, but this is what happens. So uh, I figured I'd tell you what I have in mind. I, uh, in about, a, well, from the time that I'm recording this, in about two weeks' time from here, I'll be uh, in Florida with the boat, and we have it scheduled to be hauled out of water, and uh, they're going to... Uh, hopefully clean all that yucky stuff off of there and put some new paint on and new zincs and all kinds of good stuff like that. But there's one kind of thing that I, I did want to tell you about and that's that if you look this is Bob Johnson's full foil keel. That's what he's calling this thing right there where it's the full keel like that. And, uh, hard to believe that they have uh, 12,000 pounds of lead encapsulated in there but um, that's the deal. Here I am uh, just checking out making sure that the bearings feel good on the uh, Bow thruster, that too will have to be cleaned up when I take it out of water. Ah, uh, look at her. Doesn't she look beautiful in the sun? Oh, that boat belongs in the tropics. It's breaking my heart to bring her back home, but gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> anyway, my friend Chris, uh, who was on the trip with me, he... He was good enough to take some uh, video that I'm going to get to here shortly. This is still me just taking a little break from cl cleaning the hull and cleaning the, uh, you know, when you dive down and you start uh, scraping the barnacles on the running gear, your heart rate gets up as you start running out of oxygen. So I find it good to every few, after a while, take a little diversion and get your heart rate back down to normal and then you can stay down there a little longer and work a little harder. But, this wasn't a whole lot of s to see as far as coral and fish and that sort of thing went, but uh, it was still beautiful. I was just so amazed at how it was so windy and yet the water was so so clear and so warm. I think it said it was like 83 or 84 degrees. I think that's what it said it was, but it was wonderful there. be able to hear me breathing. That's me trying to get my breathing in sync. Trying to get my heart rate down. And so here's some video that my buddy Chris uh, sent me. And he, he had a GoPro and he, he took this while we were doing our thing he was doing his thing and he went over and he had more success of course he was really on a mission to find stuff and find stuff he did look at this now he was calling that a ray and that may be I'm not like I say I grew up in, in New England waters but I would call that some form of skate and uh, 
I think that skates are in the Ray family, but uh, anyway, that's what I'm calling it. Once he found this, he was like a bloodhound and kept chasing it down. He found the Barracuda that I pointed out there in the other picture too, because his pictures were much better on it. Oh, that water. It was wonderful. You know, an ocean, ocean passage is nice, but it's a lot of work. And when it's blowing, it's hard to get a lot of sleep. And when you get sleep, things are crashing and banging and there's a lot of noise. And, uh, you know, things are moving around and you're always on edge. And your eating habits are kind of messed up. And it's just so nice to have just a little bit of downtime. And, uh, this stop was really, really great. Here he's got me actually sh showing me doing some work. So <laughs> that was kind of nice for a change. But anyway, I hope you like this video. I just want to give you a short one out to you. And uh, we'll have more for you in a couple of weeks. So stand by and see you guys on the one.